We be on them highways. Tell them be cool, we on the byways. Bring out the word, they looking sideways. Oh, oh, I don't do it my way. We on them highways. Tell them be cool, we on the byways. Bring out the word, they looking sideways. Six man, demons rolling up. I'm about to fix that. Scoffer about to talk. I got the word for him. I ain't even know I even heard from him. Scriptures coming out, it ain't no word from him. Uh, as soon as I pull off the laws, they run away. You was laughing, he gon' laugh at your calamity. Oh man, <laughs> they ain't gon' reprobate. Oh man. sideways oh, oh, I don't do it my way we on them highways tell them be cool we on the byways bring out the word they looking sideways oh, oh, I don't do this my way we be on them highways tell them be cool we on the byways bring out the word they looking sideways Boast, man. See them scriptures like a fire, now you toast, man. Yeah, you say you got the truth, but ain't no word in them. So stop lying, they ain't buying. You can't stop the way we moving, so stop trying. Yeah, we shining. Oh, oh, cause you know Christ, he be the root. So every time we come to Rain City, get it popping, you know what we came to do. What's the truth? Psalms 119, you know verse 142. That's the truth. Keep them statues and don't turn it as reproof. Oh, huh. Don't laugh at your calamity. All lip service. You still stuck in Christianity. When you should be feeding the flock of the slaughter, the sons and the daughters, but you still got a Pharisee mentality. Woo! Just appearance. Yeah, they steady hating because we still got that coherence. On that straight and narrow till we make it to the entrance. On them highways trying to bring them to repentance. We be on that front line. <laughs> we be on that front line. <laughs> you lie, we grind, we be on that front line. <laughs> we be on that front line. <laughs> you lie, we grind, you be on that front line. <laughs> we be on that front line. <laughs> you lie, we grind, we be on that front line. <laughs> on them highways and them hedges trying to bring the Lord. My people caught up in drama They wanna talk about commas, but we ain't got dollars They took away our kings, then they gave us Donald Let's talk about problems, cause we got problems Look, this is something you should know We have been brought down very low they don't want you to know Shame on thee, shame on thee, shame on thee How could you all forget about slavery? I can't forget what they did to me So let's talk about slavery How could you all forget about slavery? We go 
people talk about how slavery chains on my neck and on my mind. Have you ever seen a grown man cry? How can you? How can you forget? You ask me, kind of is right. Just to be slaves, we ain't put up a fight. Still thinking these nations gonna help us get right. But we fool ourselves, still searching for light. Watching for this nation, they can't help. These bills ain't going to pay themselves. Pray to God that he can save my soul. Spirit getting wiser, but my flesh getting old. Thanking God every day that I woke up awoke. Hypocritical religions won't wipe out the moat. Cast a beam out the eyes like the sun arose. Swear they repented, but they keep blowing smoke. Now it's not the time to stand or fall. America won't last long. Repent, the kingdom is at hand. These laws will turn you to a man. You know that we about it, cause we gon' keep on rising. I'ma always be a prophet while you sitting back watching. We gon' run it like an option, like a god. I'm alive it, and you know that you can stop it. It's real, we multiply it. Yeah. Yo, tell these heathens stop lying. Uh, take it flat like a sparrow. Most high, sending off the arrow. Find water, stay on the path, straight and narrow. Slavery, chains on my neck and on my mind. I can never see a grown man cry. On my neck and on my mind. Have you ever seen a grown man cry? How could you? How could you forget? I, thought, I wish I could be. No time for the born, let some simmer in. Make sure I reverence the priest. Yeah, these verses to your rescue like Chip and Dell. See, my mind was in prison. Couldn't correlate with the lies and the killer. Not wasting my time with the time I was given. I ain't trying to be left. I want to be delivered in the fire of the furnace. Never lukewarm, I let the fire keep burning. Kill the opponent like a matter door, Lord. Help me turn the ties of the river. And talk to my trials like a catapult. Too many called and gone. Too many falling short. Show them who we are so we can't call you more. So they can't cry anymore. Praise you the Lord. Everyone praise you the Lord, everyone all in the court If you're ready for war, every man gird up your swords Every man gird up your loins, the oppression of war Who gon' stand for the Lord, who gon' fight for the Lord Ain't running anymore, ain't running anymore Say with Slavery, chains on my neck and on my mind I can never see a grown man cry Check, check. Have you ever seen a grown man cry? How could you? How could you forget? Oh, this is what you're talking about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, that's dope. That new shit. <laughs> yeah, that new is dope, man. I wonder why you're like, you're not here to do it, honey. Turn something off for you. What you gonna do for me over there, man? We all transgress. Tell them, man, you good as you undress. No one tears come when you confess. 
Ain't no relation, now get dressed. Why, why, guy, why me? They don't know they need the answers. Teach a man how to first stand up. Pleading with sin gets no answers. Don't you know God is watching? For him to help you must change. Stop taking steps to the flame. And realize what you need. Playing with your sin right now, that's so dangerous. Your judgment come quick before you try to hang it up. That's something you can't run away from. That's something you can't run away from. And that's something you can't run away from. That's something you can't run away from. Don't tell me, make haste and delay now. Chance you better try and get your sh together. You think you're good because your judgment seems it hasn't come. But in the hour, there'll be no place to hide and no place to run. You think you're good in your security. But execution comes speedily. No idle words. You better watch your mouth. You better keep that foot whenever you step in this house. Playing with your sin right now, that's so dangerous. Your judgment come quick before you try to hang it up. That's something you can't run away from. That's something you can't run away from. And that's something you can't run away from. That's something you Waves in the crosshairs, try to run, boy. You crash like software. Don't try to get to work when the all stand boss here. He around the corner like a bald head, still pedaling, still reveling, still selling it, still illing. You still stealing, you still meddling. Ass in a pun, sin for the shit hell of it. Sin makes skin melanin irrelevant. Oh, you black wow, still click clack pow. Meanwhile, the black cloud in your background, take advantage of the now that you have here, or feel pain after death like you can't hear. Every day a challenge, still waiting in a balance In eternity of violence or inheriting a promise Watching out for your soul like Dr. Shows If you know we about to go, then let's rock and roll No more chit-chat on the Sabbath Selling knickknacks or pimps named slick backs Let the script fix that, we sharp at two picks And pick acts on the six track Officer, you get that? Yep, 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 I get that I jet lead on my sins, but get back Get down when the trial returns If you didn't learn, make haste Pick up what you might have lacked Mercy, mercy, can I get another chance? Lord, I'm thirsty for the word, but I'm gonna stand still Sin can't kill if you ignore wanna be healed. 
It's time to make a choice then. I mean, really, what kind of man would I really be? If I chose to pick up a gun and shoot my enemies, what if the enemy is really within me? Then I mean, the gun or the fun ain't gonna hit anything. Is what pace yourself, rearrange what's left, what you got to lose, but the soul. Let's grab it, get ready. It's only getting more heavy and make haste to the law. It's very necessary. Playing with your sin right now, that's so dangerous. Your judgment come quick for you, try to hang it up. That's something you can't run away from. That's something you can't run away from. And that's something you can't run away from. That's something you can't run away from. Evil continues to pour out blatantly with no regard, no fear, no nothing. When you're just straight up lying, and just making up stuff, all for the all for the sake of trying to draw disciples after them. Slip, making supplication, stacking brick by brick. They will microwave it. We're patiently waiting on the Lord to come and subdue all the nations. Desire to be a bishop, vigilant and temperate. After teach to make the world flip up on its axis. If you axis, then we answer. Got my life played out before me on this roller coaster ride. I know who control it. All your lies, we expose the camouflage, but we know it. We're the children of God, from Abraham to Moses. Try to knock me out of focus, but I'm focused in this motion. Motion picture got this script, and I know what my role Lord, is. Lord, only you know, you know, you know. Please keep me in control, in control, in control. Lord, only you know, you know, you know. Please keep me in control, in control, in control. I gotta be vigilant now. The devil be walking around, seeking who he may devour. Babylon gone in an hour, and I'm not trying to go down in the lake of fire with her, with her. Every night I'm praying for patience, patiently waiting, but then my anger keep telling me to skip, go straight to Satan. That's something Father be hating. Please don't cut me out, my nation. I repent, Lord, I repent. I promise that I will make it. Give me the will to endure. The courage to stand, the wisdom to believe that with you I am a man, the knowledge of self, the seal of your laws, you write them things on my heart, your words will never depart. Lord, only you know, you know, you know, please keep me in control, in control, in control, Lord, only you know, you know, you know, please keep me in control, in control, in control. I gotta be vigilant now, the devil be walking around, seeking who he may devour. Babylon gone in an hour, and I'm not trying to go down in the lake of fire with her, with her. To take away them demons, gotta fast and pray. Focus on the script, that's how I meditate. Devil said he's trying to, trying to take me out. <laughs> but I told him this is not a day. Governor of my life, you control my mind. The bishop must be blameless Not soon to be angry, no Cleanse me till I'm stainless oh, Lord, only you know, you know, you know Please keep me in control, in control, in control Lord, only you know, you know, you know Please keep me in control, in control, in control I gotta be vigilant now The devil be walking around Seeking who he may devour 
Babylon gone in an hour And I'm not trying to go down In the lake of fire with her With her What you see is a new man fighting in no life I mean, I got a mean punch But that flesh know how to fight A book of spoiler lust Jabs her anger from the right Who hasn't taken some licks But I'm strong in the Lord's might My mind tipped it by what it minds Only an Israelite No when it's about that time I'm always kicking, pushing I'm just tired of the bullshit But many Jake's full of it But I gotta stay temperate Lord, Damn. only you know, you know, you know Please keep me in control, in control, in control Lord, only you know, you know, you know Please keep me in control, in control, in control I gotta be vigilant now The devil be walking around Seeking who he may devour Babylon gone in an hour And I'm not trying to go down In the lake of fire with her Check, check. <laughs> that was bad. Shalom, shalom, Israel. Most high Christ bless. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Welcome to your daily bread. Let me just make sure we on real quick. Yeah, oh, there we go. All praises, all praises, all praises. Shalom, most high Christ bless. Welcome to your daily bread. That's right. Daily bread. All praise to the most high. I'm Officer Gadda to my right. Officer Jerram. All praise it. So we're just going to jump right into it. We're going to jump right into it. Let me get Matthew 4 and 4. Let me get Matthew 4 and 4. Today's class is called The Call to Endure. I did this class a week ago in uh, Jacksonville, but we're going to do it again because <laughs> it's something else I want to touch. Uh, Matthew 4 and 4. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 4. Uh-huh. But he answered it and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Now, what, what Christ is saying right here is very, very heavy. He said, man should not live by bread alone. We need food to live. We need food to, to grow. We need food to wake, you know what I'm saying, to, to be able to do the things that we do on a daily basis. Christ said, just like you need food to live, you need every word of God to live as well. Right. You can't have one without another. So just like we desire food, we desire uh, 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 water, we desire all those things to live, we must desire the word of God to live. Because without the word of God, we're nothing. We are nothing. So all praise to the most side of what's called the daily bread. Because you need your daily bread, y'all. You need it. Give me Romans 15 and 4. Romans 15 and 4. All praises. The book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. Uh huh. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Now, I know we read this scripture a lot, and, you know, we, we always, you know, we start off with this scripture, but you got to really understand what Paul is saying. It says, whatsoever's written aforetime is written for our learning. When you when it says our learning, that means you have to commit it to memory. Right. In order to say, hey, I learned this, I know what it's talking about, I memorized it. When you say you learned your ABCs, you get A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Yeah. You learn two plus two is four. You ain't gonna never forget that thing. Paul say, read it again. Watch this. For whatsoever things were written aforetime uh -huh. were written for our learning. We must commit the Bible to memory. Why? Because we are reliving the Bible. We are reliving the scenarios, the problems, the situations, the history, the promises, the curses. We are re reliving this thing. So Paul said, whatsoever was written four times, written for your learning. Watch this. Read on. That we through patience through, and comfort uh -huh. of the scriptures might have hope. Because we know. We know how to get out of a situation. We know how to deal with each other. We know how to deal with our wives. We know how to deal with our children. We know how to deal with the leaders. We know how to deal with the wicked of our people. 
So we are reliving the Bible over again. We are, I mean, it's it's crazy when you when you read the prophecies, how the prophets were uh dealt. We going through the same thing. Right. It's the same exact thing. And throughout the whole Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we was called to endure. We must endure this thing. Why? Because was written for times, written for our learning, so that we may know how to endure. This is the blueprint. This this Bible right here right. is the blueprint to, to the kingdom. <laughs> it's the blueprint. You ain't got to think no more. Right. You ain't got to think. You ain't got to think no more. <laughs> the Bible do the thinking for you. Right. <laughs> for real, though, you ain't got to think, bro. You ain't got to know how to do nothing. All you got to do is, okay, God says do this. Yes, Lord, I'm going to do that. That's it. You, know how, you know how easy that is? You ain't got to think for yourself. <laughs> Give me Isaiah 49 to 6. You ain't got to think for yourself, man. I want Paul to say it was written a four times written for your learning. Learn what your fathers and, and foremothers went through and how they got in our situations, how they dealt with it. And you do the same thing. You follow suit. And you do that, you're not going to fail. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 49, verse 6. Uh -huh. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant Come on. to raise up the tribes of Jacob. So God says it's a light thing. It's an easy thing for us to be his servants. Who are the servants? The Israelites are. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians that repent and keep the laws of God and the faith in Christ. We are the servants. They said it's an easy thing to raise up the tribes of Jacob. It's an easy thing to be the Lord's servant. When you start finding it hard, when you start uh, finding it grievous to be the Lord's servant, something's off with your spirit. Something's wrong. Examine yourselves. When you find it hard to do the work of the Lord, mm -hmm. when you find it hard to endure to the end, something's wrong. Because God said it's a light thing. Read that from the top again. Verse 6. And he said, it is a light thing. It's an easy thing. That thou shouldest be my servant. Said, it's a light thing that you're going to be my servant. <laughs> God said it's easy. So when you start finding it hard to do, check yourself. You are, hey, you're on the verge of bugging out. <laughs> when you start finding it hard to go out, put in work, right. to endure to the end, you start finding, making excuses why you can't endure to the end, check your spirit, Israel. Check your spirit. Give me Proverbs 10, 17. The call to endure, y'all. We are called to endure. The book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 17. Mm -hmm. He is he is in he is in the way of life that keep it instruction. He is in the way of life that keep it instruction. What is the instruction? The law, statutes, and commandments. Right. And the history of the prophets and the kings. The instruction. He is in life that keep it instructions. Read. But he that refuses reproof, he that refuses correction, erreth. Erreth. That means you're on the verge of death. So it says you were in life that keepeth instruction. Like we went over Romans 15 and 4, everything's written for time, written for our learning, so that we ain't got to think for ourselves. The instruction is right here in this Bible. Keep the instruction. Keep what your forefathers said. Right. Keep what your foremothers did. Keep the uh, the writings of the apostles, the writings of the of, of the disciples. Christ is writing Moses because everything is written of Christ. Everything is ordained of God. Get uh Romans, I'm sorry, Isaiah 30 and 8. But this is the problem, though. This is the problem. We tend and and you know, we know what it is. It's the it's the American Babylon uh ways that told us that we are free. So we think we're free, so we think we can think for ourselves now. And when we start thinking for ourselves, we start saying the hell with who God put up. The hell with what God say. I'm my own man. I, I, I got to think for myself. I got to do what I think is right. God says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who should know it? That's why we don't even have to think for ourselves. He thinks for us. God say, lean not unto thy there own you go. understanding. There you go. Lean not unto thy own understanding. All praises. Because <laughs> when you do that, yeah. I'm, I'm, it, it, it never fails, bro. Yeah. 
It never fails. When you do that, I'm telling you, air, man. You air, you air, you air. You you go off eventually. It never fails. You go off. Read that. Book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 8. Come on. Now go, write it before them in the table. Uh-huh. And note it in the book. In the book. That it may be for the time to come uh -huh. forever and ever. Uh-huh. That this is the rebellious people. God says, this nation right here. Remember, in uh, Ephesians, he called us the children of disobedience. <laughs> he said, this is a rebellious people. It says, written forever. Read that again, man. <laughs> now, go, write it before them in the table. Uh -huh. And note it in the book. In a book, the Bible. That it may be for the time to come uh -huh. forever and ever. Stop. God says, forever and ever. Remind these wicked people that they wicked as hell. Forever and ever. God says, y'all going to be wicked forever. It's going to be wicked amongst you forever. Right. <laughs> Everybody ain't going to be righteous. Read on. That this is a rebellious people. Rebellious people. Lying children. Lying children. Watch this. Children that would not hear the law of the Lord. Would not hear the law of the Lord. It says we are rebellious people. Why? Because God gives us the blueprint to life. He gives us the cheat sheet to life. And we still won't follow the cheat sheet. Y'all know we, hey, y'all, y'all know y'all was in school. Oh, you know, when I was in school, bro, we had cheat sheets. We used to write, I mean, I ain't never, I ain't never wrote so small before in my life. Paper this big, got all the all the answers to the questions. <laughs> Get it ready for um quest. I mean test day. <laughs> right, right. We used to pass that thing around. Here you go. Hey, I'm done. I'm done. My test. Here you go. Everybody, the, everybody, in the class get A's. Everybody, in the class pass. <laughs> God says that He gave you the cheat sheet. He gave you what you need to live, what you need to make it, right. and you still won't follow it. Read that again. That it that seat. that this is a rebellious people, lying children. Uh -huh. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Come on. Which say to the seers, see not. They say to the seers, the teachers, the leaders, the prophets, the judges, see not. Don't see my sin. Read on. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Uh huh. Speak unto us smooth things. And that's what we want to hear as a nation. As a nation, we want to hear smooth things. Tell me what's good for me. Tell me that I'm perfect that i'm gonna make it no matter what i do that's what i want to hear because when we when, when the bishops and the deacons and the captains and officers and soldiers when we teach you know rough things when we teach the law of the lord it's a problem right it's a problem why because god says that we are a wicked people forever and ever <laughs> get romans 12 and 1 the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. Uh -huh. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Come on. Holy, acceptable unto God, uh -huh. which is your reasonable service. So it says, present your bodies a living sacrifice. What does that mean? That means that your bodies, your mind, your soul, does not belong to you. Right. Well, let, watch this. Get First Corinthians six and twenty. First Corinthians chapter six, verse twenty. Uh huh. For ye, for ye are brought with a price. Read on. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Say so you are bought with a price. I mean, our bodies are not ours. Yeah. Our minds are not ours. God says you bought with a price. Read that again. For ye are bought with a price. Uh -huh. Therefore glorify God in your body. Glorify God in your body. Let's go back to Romans 12. This is how you glorify God. Because you bought with a price. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Uh -huh. I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Watch this. Holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service. God says our lives are not our own. But the Lord's. You are bought with a price. Now you got to present yourself a living sacrifice. I mean, everything, when you when you read in Leviticus 4, Numbers, how we dealt with, with the sacrifice, 
Everything had to be perfect in line. Everything had to be perfect. If it wasn't perfect, the Lord did not accept it. Read that again. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, uh -huh. holy, acceptable unto God, Read. which is your reasonable service. Which is your reasonable service. Give me 2 Timothy 2. 2 Timothy 2. So we, we got to endure this thing, y'all. We are called to endure till the end. We are called to endure. 2 Timothy 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Watch this. Theref, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of uh -huh. Jesus Christ. Read on. No man that wore it entangled himself with the affairs of this life. So it says endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, let, let, let's examine this. It's using the analogy of a soldier. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I know, brothers and sisters, we, um, not me in particular, but we was in Esau's army, and we had to endure some unspeakable things. We had to endure sleepless nights. We had to endure, uh, you know, uh, what was that? Was that when you um, post post traumatic stress, PTSD? PTSD. Yeah. You know, some of us can't even go to bed, and and you know, without the light on. Some of us can't can't you know have somebody knock on your door at three in the morning. You start freaking out. Right. You had to go. You know, you you had to travel with with weight on. Throughout, you know, whatever your tour was, Iraq, Afghanistan, you know, some people came back messed up in the head, hooked on drugs. You had to endure all that thing in Esau's army. Now that we in the Lord's army, what are we enduring? Are we enduring uh, temptation? Are we enduring correction? Are we enduring uh, uh, putting in work? Or are we making excuses? Are we making excuses for our flesh? and doing what our minds or our flesh wants us to do. Read that again. Um, 2 Timothy 2, verse 3. Come on. Thou therefore endure hardness. Endure hardness. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We are soldiers of the Lord. As soldiers, we must be prepared to endure hardness. So, I mean, anything the enemy throws, we got to be prepared to take it. We got to be prepared to dodge it. We got to be prepared to take cover and shoot back. Not mm. not literal guns, but spiritually. Right. We got to be prepared for anything. But the thing is, when the attack comes from the enemy, we don't we think it's an ally. We think it's an ally helping us out when it's actually the damn devil killing you. <laughs> we don't even we don't even notice it. Right. We don't even notice it until it's too late. God says, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Read on. No man that warreth entangling himself with the affairs of this life. God says, no man that warreth entangling himself with the affairs of this life. The vainness, Solomon said, everything is vain. Right. Means nothing. The only the conclusion of the matter is keep God's commandments. Mm -hmm. Everything else is vain. You know, we uh, today, what is uh, December? What's the day? The, December 14th. Hell, in 10 days, in 11 days, you got, you know, the holiday known as Christmas. Christmas. Well, when I was in the world, we did Christmas. But knowing the truth, right. knowing what Christmas represents, how it was, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, Saturnalia, the winter solstice, where they had orgies Damn. on that day. What? The grown men, the grown women, the young men, the kids, the children, the animals, they would all have an orgy with the animals, Dang. with the little kids. They say all laws ceased on December 25th. But today, they put Christ in front of it and say this is Christ Mass Christmas. <laughs> You remind me of that movie Purge. You know that movie Purge? There you go. They yep. got a day where mm -hmm. you can do whatever you want. Kill, yep. steal, rob. Yep. So Christmas going into the same thing. It's going into the same thing, bro. And even when you look on Christmas, uh, Christmas parties and Christmas gatherings, people get drunk. Yep. People sleep around. Hormone, lust. All that stuff go down. All that stuff go down. Read that scripture again. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. Uh -huh. No man that warreth 
entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, uh -huh. that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. God, so God says he has chosen us to be soldiers. Y'all gotta understand, that's... That. It's not like you got a choice. <laughs> right. It reminds me of Jonah. God chose Jonah to go prophesy well, in Nineveh, right? right? What happened? Jonah didn't want to go out there. What did God do? He forced him off this boat. What was it? A boat where he cast him off the boat yep. and get bitten in, in, a, in the belly of a fish. Yep. Meaning you ain't got no choice. Yep. Let's say you want to turn your back on this. What you think going to happen to you? The same thing happened the, to Jonah. You might right. get put to death. Right. Yep. The same thing. Because yep. the Lord chose you. And, and you know, let, let's get that real quick. John yep. 15. J just to prove what Officer Jerham saying. John 15 and verse 16. The book of. The Cause, book cause, of cause that's a heavy point right there. Yep. The Lord shows you that that you goodness gracious. Do you know what happens if you get drafted by Esau's military and you choose not to go? Right. <laughs> they deem you uh, uh what they uh what they call it uh dog. I forget what it's called. Basically, you are enemy to the to the country. Right. They put you behind in prison. Hmm. They throw you in prison if you don't if if you don't choose to serve in Esau's military when they choose you. So what you? <laughs> What you think ain't nothing going to happen to you when the Lord chose you and you don't want to do the work that right. he commanded you to do? Read that. The book of John, chapter 15, verse 16. Uh -huh. You have not chosen me. Christ said, you ain't chose me. Nobody here woke up out of the blue hmm. and said, we the Israelites. Nobody did that. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody online did it. Nobody, none of the bishops did it. We all was taught by somebody. The Lord put it on our spirit to go on YouTube and, you know, it, it, we, we, we might be looking at a twerk video right. and might see brothers in purple right. on the suggested videos. <laughs> right, right on the side. <laughs> right, right, right on the side. And you just happen to click on it and you'd be like, immediately, right. that's me. We the Israelites. Nobody just woke up and said, Jesus is black. I don't know how I know. But he's black. Nobody said that. Yeah. <laughs> we was all asleep. We was all in a dead state. Read what? that again. Go, go ahead. What you going to say? Doing our own pleasures. Right, right. Doing what? our own thing. Whatever. You Then you come across the street. You see a fly. Or you see somebody right. teaching on the street. Mm -hmm. You ain't choose that. You just ran into it. Right, right. That's why scripture saying Proverbs, it says for uh, Proverbs 20 and 24, I forgot how it goes, but it goes, a man's going is, not, is of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Yep, yep. So John 15, verse 16. Yep. You have not chosen me, mm -hmm. but I have chosen you. Guys, Christ said you ain't chose me. He chose us. He handpicked every last one of us. Do you understand what that means? Like Officer Jerry was saying, we was out there doing our own thing. The Lord vouched for us to the Father like, hey, Father, uh, don't put him to death yet. Um, in two years, he going to come and serve you, and he going to do mighty works. <laughs> All of us can, can relate to that thing. We was on a path to death. We was on a path to destruction. And somehow, some way, we veered off from that path of destruction. Now we on righteousness. Right. I, I, I was telling Cap, ain't no way in heck that four years ago, five years ago, I would ever believe if anybody ever told me in five years, you're going to be teaching the word of God. Right. No way possible, man. I would have laughed in your face. <laughs> I'm like, bro, you must not know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no way possible, bro. That's how we know, man. Ain't no way in hell that five years ago I'd have told, hey, hey, bro, you know, in five years, I'm smoking a blunt. Bro, you know, in five years, bro, I'm going to give up this weed. I'm going to give up this dope seller. I'm going to give up all this stuff. And I'm going to be teaching the word of God. Ain't no way in hell, bro. <laughs> That's how you know it's of the Lord. Keep reading. But I have chosen you uh -huh. and ordained you. And what? Ordain you. And ordain. Let's look up that word ordain real quick. Let's look up that word ordain. Because ordain is a heavy word. Ordain. Just like Officer uh, Jeremiah was saying, you ain't got no choice. <laughs> Just like Jer uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah was like, hey, I'm, a, I'm young. Yep. Most I say, man, I already ordained you a prophet from the womb. I Meaning you was already chosen, bro. You can't even say nothing right now. I've been chosen you. Read that. Uh, the definition of ordain. Mm -hmm. Make someone a priest or minister 
confer holy orders on. Go to go to the synonyms. Synonyms. Appoint. Appoint. Anoint. Uh-huh. Consecrate. Uh-huh. Install. Uh-huh. Invest. Induct. Decree. Decree. I, I like that right yeah. there. Rule. Rule. Decree. That means that the Lord already wrote it down <laughs> in stone. This is what it's going to be. This one is gonna be. Look at this brother. This brother is good, man. Goodness <laughs> gracious! <laughs> oh, there you go. Right there. You got it right there. Hey, this brother's good. Go, go down. Go down as a die. Go down to the. Um, go down to uh, Miriam. Go down to the Miriam. You know it might be a. Uh, okay, command, ordain, rule, yep. command. The Most High commanded Ancient. us. Right. Read that again. And or. Um, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you uh -huh. and ordained you. And commanded you. That you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. It says you should go and bring forth fruit, meaning go out and teach the word. Go out and tell your people, my people, my flock, my sheep, that they are the 12 tribes of Israel. That's the light thing Isaiah there was saying in 49. Go. There to be my servant to go out <laughs> and make wake up your 12 yep. tribes of Israel. Yep, there you go. It's a light thing. It's a light thing. Because a, a, a lot of us in the world, we was doing some crazy stuff. We were doing some crazy stuff where we had to look over our shoulders every day. Hmm. <laughs> we were doing some crazy <laughs> stuff. Some stuff that's like, bro, I don't know how you made it out of that. Right. The Lord said, this is easy. Now that you in the truth, now that you know who you are, now that you have been ordained or commanded by Jesus Christ, right. this is easy to do compared to what we was doing in the world. <laughs> this is easy. Read on. Is that it? Uh, yeah. That whosoever you shall ask of my of the Father in my name, he he may give it. So to it you. says, go and put in the work. Go and put in the work. First Corinthians twelve. First Corinthians chapter twelve. And uh, let me see. First Corinthians 12 and four, 14. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14. Mm -hmm. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand. So it says the body is not one member, but many. The body is referring to us. Right. We are the body. We are the body, right? It says, for the body is not one member, but many. Come on. There, I, uh, verse 15. Verse 15. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. So if I'm the foot and Jerahim is the hand, mm -hmm. how can I therefore say I am not of the body because I'm not the hand? Mm -hmm. How can I say, man, they putting too much pressure on me, man? I got to carry all the weight. I'm the foot. I got to carry all the weight. <laughs> the hand, he ain't got to do nothing. He just uh, 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 dangling in the wind. I got to carry all the doggone weight. Read on, watch this. I am not of the body. It is therefore not of the body. He says, is it therefore not of the body? Because I'm not the hand. Right. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm handling all the weight. Therefore, I'm not of the body because I don't want to be. Nobody wakes up one morning and your foot is missing. Hmm. <laughs> foot decided, hey, I'm out. I'm out, man. The hell with this. I'm gone. Nobody does that. Nobody part does that. If you go to sleep with your five fingers on your right hand, you're going to wake up with five fingers on your right hand. Right. Your, your pinky finger ain't just going to throughout the night just decide, I'm out of here, man. The hell with this. I'm not the thumb. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's impossible. Read on. Watch this. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Everybody have their purpose. The eye has its purpose. The hand has its purpose. A purpose. The foot have its purpose. Every member in this body has a purpose. You may not know it yet, but you have a purpose. That's why you were called. You are called to endure because you have something valuable that the Lord can use. Everybody in here does, women and men. You have a purpose. Read on. Is it therefore not of the, well, no, verse 17. Uh -huh. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If everybody only did one thing, if, if everybody congregation only video edited, everybody, everybody, can't nobody else teach, 
Nobody goes on the street. Nobody does the kitchen. Nobody does the kids' corner. Nobody does the maintenance of the school, the construction. Nobody cleans the bathroom. Nobody does anything. Everybody only does video editing. Hmm. Reverse 17 again. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? Right. If everybody only did video editing, where is everything else? Hmm. <laughs> Who's going to make the food? Who gonna prepare the, the food for the body? Who gonna prepare the bread and wine? Right. Who gonna make sure that the, the chairs are, are neat? Who gonna make sure that the you know the uh, the building maintenance is up kept? Who gonna help us make the garments? Right. Who gonna make the garments? Make us look glorious out there when we teach the word of God. Right. Who gonna do it? Yeah. Everybody is here for a reason. Read on. If the whole if the whole were ear hearing, uh huh. Where were the smelling? Where were the where's the nose? If everybody's the ear, who's gonna be the nose? Mm. Read on. But now hath God set the members, every one of now, them. I want you to read that slow. Read verse 18 again. But now hath God have set. God. Yeah. Come on. Set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased it him. You are here because God set you here specifically. He set you right here. <laughs> With your gift you got. If you're on the editing team. You better do that thing with all your might. Why? Because God put you there. If, if, if you a reader, you better read with all your might because God put you there. If you make garments, you better make garments with all your might because God put you there. You are there for a reason. You cannot, therefore, leave your purpose and try to do your own thing. You cannot leave your purpose that the Lord put you here to do. The Lord put you here. For a reason, because you got something valuable to bring to his body. It's not your body. It's his body. He's the shepherd. He's the king. We just the sheep. It's his body. The Lord put you here for a purpose. Give me uh, 1 John 3 and 1. So it says, God hath set members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. So the positions that we are in, the Lord is pleased with that thing. The Lord is pleased with the positions we are in. <laughs> Wherever he set you up at. Right, right. <laughs> Wherever you at, you may not like it, but the Lord is pleased. All right? First John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. God <laughs> so what manner of love that God bestowed upon us the titles of sons of God? Mm. Daughters of God. That's a mighty, mighty title. It's a high calling. Right. It's a high calling. Can't nobody else on the planet. Right. The Chinese can't say that. The white men can't say that. The Arabs can't say that. We the only people on the planet that can say we are the true sons of the only living God. Read on. Be behold. What manner of love the Father have bestowed upon us uh -huh. that we should be called the sons of God. Come on. Therefore, the world knoweth us not. Read on. Because it knew him not. So said the world don't know us because it didn't know Christ. Right, watch this. Beloved, now, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what mm -hmm. we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. So says we know when he comes back, we going to be like him. Damn. Christ did. Christ walked on water, y'all. I don't know if y'all noticed that. Christ walked on water. Christ flew. <laughs> Christ turned water to wine. Yeah. We gonna, Christ told demons to flee. We going to be like him. Christ said, the works I do, you shall do greater. Oh, works. oh man. Damn. That's why this call to endure is, is, very, is very important, y'all. I mean, it's, it's the... It's the best calling you can ever have. You are called to endure, and the Lord said, you will make it if you endure. I brought you here because I know you can endure. Think about it. If 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 Think about this. If the Lord said, I would not put more on you than what you can handle, that means that every situation you go through in the eyes of the Lord, you can make it. You can endure it in the eyes of the Lord. Why? Because he ain't going to put nothing on us that we can't handle. So, see, the most I know our spirit. Right. We don't know it, but the most I know our spirit, what type of spirit we got. 
So, I mean, everything he put on us is because we can handle it. Right. Read on. When he shall appear, we shall be like him. Uh -huh. For we shall see him as he is. We shall see him as he is. And every man that hath his hope in him purify himself. Every man have his hope in him. Have this hope in him. This hope is that we're going to see him as he is. We're going to be like him. Have this hope in him. Come on. At even as he is pure. Whosoever committed. Nope, that's it. Read verse 3 again. Verse 3. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself. Purifieth himself. Let's, let, let's look at the definition of purify. Let's see. How do we purify ourselves? Uh, definition of purify, purification. Uh, the process of extracting something from a substance. Mm -hmm. The process of making something spiritually or ceremonial, ceremonially clean. There you go. The process of making clean, Some something clean. Purify yourself, right? Purify yourself. Uh, get me Luke 14 and 26 real quick. Luke 14, 26. The book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 26. Come on. Uh, if, any, if any man come to me and hate not his father and his mo and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. So it says, if any man cometh to the Father or cometh to Christ, and hate not his brother, hate not his sister, hate not his wife, they cannot be his disciples, right? Watch this. We must be willing, and the word, that that's why I, I like Luke's uh, account of it, because the word hate right. <laughs> is very strong. It ain't literally saying you got to, you know, wish yeah. death upon them or, you know, emotionally like I can't stand your guts. What it's saying is you got to be willing to put Christ above everybody. Your father, your mother, your your uncle, your sister, your brother, your wife, hell, even your own desires. You got to be willing to put Christ before everything. I give an example. How we was talking about Christmas. And and and, and we're gonna touch on Christmas. We're gonna touch on Christmas a little bit. Because during this season, you know, during this time of the year, to me, you know, um uh, th th this is how I'm thinking. Ain't no coincidence that people always fall out during this time of the year. And the reason why I say that is because it's a battle. You know the scripture say the spirit and the flesh war against each other. Your flesh wanna go back to doing the old you. The old, you know, the 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 holidays, the gatherings of the family, and a lot of times we will, you know, we 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 will, uh, uh, what's the word? We will, um, we will mask that yeah. fit. We will mask that with something like, uh, you know, you being wicked. I gotta go, right. or you know, leadership correcting me. I don't like it. I gotta go. But it's actually you. You are losing the battle between your spirit and your flesh. You are actually losing the battle and all these things that you have never hated, you never hated for the word, for the, for Christ's sake, they still dormant in you. So whether it be drugs, whether it be women, whether it be wicked holidays, whether it be your mom, your dad, your family, inside of you, you have never hated to the point of putting Christ over them. You you mask it. You mask it with fringes. You mask it with keeping the Sabbath. You mask it with saying Shalom, Most High Christ, bless. But inside of you, you have never gotten over that thing. So what happens is, eventually, it it, it grows so big. It grows so big. Well, now Satan will put it on your mind that it's not because you want to keep Christmas while you're leaving. Now it's because these niggas are wicked. 
It's not because you miss your mom while you're leaving. Now it's because this doctor's wrong. You see what I'm saying? It's it's masking. It's always something in you that that that's causing you to uh come out the spirit to be a, to be vulnerable to Satan. That's because you have never hated the things that Christ told you to hate. So it's like saying, officer, uh, they never they never fully admitted to their, their or confessed what they there had inside of go. them. Yep, and they covered it up, and it it was always in them. Basically, it's, it was it was always, always it's nothing new that they nothing came up upon. Yep. Yep, it was always in them. They they never uh, uh, hated it like Christ said. They never admitted it. They they never confessed it. Hey, I need help with this. They always you know they jumped over it or you know they just mask it with you know oh the doctor's wrong now. They mask it with oh these niggas evil. They mask it with oh he did me wrong. No matter what happens in this truth, and we gonna go over it. No matter what happens, nothing should ever make you. Leave. None shall make you depart. Why? Because you are a vulnerable piece in the body. Christ put you here for a reason. He put you here so that your trials and tribulations can be met and can be endured. It's something in you that he want to purge out. And the only way he can purge it out is you got to go through fire. And you're going to go through fire here. You're not going to go through fire by yourself. <laughs> Nobody going to put themselves through fire at the, when they're home by themselves. You're going to go through fire when you're dealing with other people, when you're dealing with your brothers and sisters. Read that again. Verse 26. Mm -hmm. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother. God says we got to hate all that stuff. We got to be willing to let it go at the drop of a dime. Come on. And wife uh -huh. and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life and also. your own life, even your own desires. Come on. He cannot be my disciple. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. God says you got to deal with what you're going through. You got to be able to bear your cross. Bear your burdens. Deal with it. Confess it. Read the scriptures on how to get over it. Uh, pray fast. Anoint thyself with oil and deal with it. All right. Get me uh, 2 Ezra 14.34. 34. Second Ezra 14 and verse 34. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 14, verse 34. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding. We must subdue. Subdue means to hold down or, or to hold in a uh, uh, captive. Put put your thoughts into captivity. Right. Subdue your own understanding. Come on. And reform your hearts. Uh -huh. Ye shall be kept alive. You shall be what? Kept alive. In God says these are the stipulations, stipulations to living. You must endure your own thoughts. Subdue your own understanding. When you go to a school and the college professor or the teacher tells you uh, the formula to use to solve this problem is two, no, it's Y uh, times X. Close parentheses, open parentheses, Z times two. You don't say, Professor, you're wrong. <laughs> you don't say, no, Professor, that uh, formula is wrong. Professor going to throw you out the class. <laughs> right. Professor going to say, no, 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 all right, you, all right, you think it's right? All right, well, get the hell out. Go. Go to the dean's office. Go to the privilege office. You got to go. You ain't teaching this class. But we, but we... In this true, we don't subdue our own understanding. We won't subdue our own understanding, but we'll think that we just so, uh, what's the word, endowed with wisdom, with wisdom right. that we will just override our teachers, override the people that have actually taught us who we were mm. <laughs> because we think that we better. Or, you know, we think that we got a, 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 a deeper understanding. God says subdue your understanding. Subdue that thing. Hold it in the captivity. Because when you don't, <laughs> the chances of you make the chance of you enduring is very slim. Mm -hmm. Chance of you enduring becomes very slim. Read on. Read it again. Uh, verse 34. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding. Subdue your own understanding. And reform your heart. Change your mind. Change your mind. Repent. Change your mind. Be converted. Come on. 
you shall be kept alive. You shall be kept alive. Read on. And after death. And after death. You shall obtain mercy. You shall obtain mercy. Watch this. Get 1 Peter 5 and 8. Get 1 Peter 5 and 8. We are called to endure, y'all. Endure till the end. Endure till. Like I tell brothers, if I never see you again, endure till the damn end, man. <laughs> right. First Peter 5 and 8. Read that. The book of First Peter, chapter 5, verse 8. Watch this. Be sober. Be sober. Be vigilant. Vigilant means watchful. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom seeking whom he may devour. Seeking whom he may devour. Now, this scripture says Satan is walking around like a roaring lion, right? It says, seeking whom he may devour. Do you actually see a lion walking down the street devouring people? No, you don't. You don't see that. <laughs> Watch this. This is how Satan going to come to you. Uh, let me get Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. This is how Satan going to come to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. Uh -huh. And don't and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Satan is going to come to you like an angel of light. He's going to come to you like, uh, uh, this is the true understanding. Right, with that smooth word. Right, the smooth words. This is, you know, he, gonna, he ain't just going to come to you and say, hey, nigga, I'm Satan. Right. <laughs> Break yourself. <laughs> give me uh, give me give me everything in your pocket, nigga. I'm Satan. Nah, he ain't gonna do that. He's gonna come to you like an angel of light. He's gonna come to you with smooth words. He's gonna come to you with something that you already dealing with in your spirit, and it's gonna sound very good to you. Right. Like That's, you got Eve. Right. A absolutely. Yeah. With with uh with subtlety, subtle words. Yeah. Go back to Peter's. Go back to Peter. So so it says Satan gonna come. Like in Peter, it says a roaring lion. Right. Paul said an angel of light. Watch this. Go ahead. First Peter chapter five verse eight. Be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So it says, as a roaring lion walketh about seeketh whom he may devour. How, if Satan's gonna come like a like an angel of light, like Paul said. But Peter said that angel of light is also a roaring lion. <laughs> so how do you tell when the good is actually bad? Because if an angel, if Paul said he coming like an angel of light, he coming in something that looks good, but Peter said it's a lion in disguise, how do you determine if the good is actually bad? Because right. that's the question. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to... Okay, I, I know this looked like an angel, but oh, how do I know this is an angel? How do I know? This I know, Galatians 5. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. I say walk in the spirit. And Five and, and the the 16. 16. Uh, 17. Start 17. Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. Uh -huh. For the flesh lusted against the spirit. Uh, it's, it's a battle. And the spirit against the flesh. Uh -huh. And these are contrary to, the, to one to another. Uh -huh. So that you cannot do the things that you would. So you cannot do the things that you would. It's a battle. It's a battle. So how do you know if this angel of light is actually Satan in disguise? How do you know if this angel of light is actually a lion waiting on you to turn your back? This how uh you know you uh we read about what I was a kid, we read what is that? A uh, little red riding hood. Yeah. <laughs> uh the wolf ate her grandmother and then laid down in the bed. With all her grandmother's, you know, stuff on, and she came, and she and she's like, uh, you know, grandmother, what great teeth you have, <laughs> you know. She's still thinking it's her grandmother, but the grandma got wolf teeth, the grandma got wolf claws, right. the grandma got you know wolf eyes or wolf nose, and she thinking it's the grandma because it's disguised like the grandma. 
it's the wolf. <laughs> right, but it's, it's actually a wolf. Yeah. And she ended up getting eaten in the end. But, you know, th this is how we determine if that angel of light is actually Satan. These are the attributes that we're going to read about. The attributes of Satan. Read verse 19. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery. Adultery. Adultery is an attribute of Satan. Come on. Fornication. Fornication, an attribute of Satan. Uncleanness. Uh-huh. Lasciviousness. Uh-huh. Idolatry. Uh-huh. Witchcraft. <laughs> Hatred. Come on. Variance. Emulation. Wrath. Strife. Sedition, heresies, envying, murder, drunkenness, revelings, mm -hmm. and such like of that the which I tell you that before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not enter the kingdom of God. So these are the attributes of Satan. This is how you determine if this angel of light that appears to be righteous that appears to be good is Satan. It's actually a lion waiting to devour me. You judge it by this. And I recommend everybody online look these definitions up. Right. Look these up because the and, and, and you'll be surprised because everybody, everybody has one of these spirits. Everybody, at least one. At least one of these demons, because these are evil spirits at least one of these is on everybody so we have to acknowledge it okay i i know i deal with hatred okay now we can help you now you can be built up now now you confess that thing to the lord right go back to peter's first peter's chapter five and verse eight be sober be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a warring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So be sober. Be vigilant. Vigilant is when you're looking out for danger. Be vigilant. Look out for danger, y'all. Because danger is right around the corner. Danger is right around the corner. Read on. Whom resisted? Whom resists? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Read verse 8 again. Verse 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a warring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. The devil is on the prowl, y'all. And what you got to understand is we have the tools to catch him. We have the tools to, uh, what's the word, to spot him. Right. We have the tools to spot him. But when you don't use the tools, that's why when you read, give me that in Timothy 2.15. Timothy 2.15, right? Study. Second Timothy? Second Timothy? Yeah, I think it's Second Timothy. Yep, Second Timothy 2.15. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Study to show thyself approved. That's why we must study to show ourselves approved. Read on. Unto God. Watch this. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. We must study. We must study because the only way you're going to be able to spot Satan like that dressed like an angel but is actually a lion, the only way you're going to spot that thing is if you study. You got to know the laws of God. You got to know the laws. You got to know when you see a woman talking but she got pants on talking about God, she ain't coming from the scriptures because her defiling herself with the pants letting you know that that ain't of God. It ain't coming from God. Just like a brother talking to you, preaching to you in a Christian church with no beard in his face. But yeah, he's speaking righteousness. Love God. You got to know, once you know the laws of God, you can know the difference. Like Officer Gad was bringing out. Adultery, idolatry, all these spirits you can discern and cut off based on the laws of God. Your foundation is the laws of God. Right. Yeah. Hey, all praises. All praises. Yeah. So when we read, uh, read, that, read that scripture again, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 2, 2 verse 15. Mm -hmm. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Mm-hmm. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So say you gotta be studied to approve, prove yourself to God, right. to God. So that means that this how this how y'all gotta understand. We reliving the Bible. Right. The Lord allowed Satan to tempt Job. Hmm. 
Job had to prove himself to God. He had to prove himself to God. That's why I say, say uh, okay, you know, I go to a front of the earth and, you know, tip the man. God said, okay, have you uh, considered my servant Job? Yep. Okay, well, all right, well, move your hand from my tip to and I bet you he curse you. God said, okay, go do that, but you can't touch his life. Now you gotta you you you, well, you gotta like visualize this thing. Yeah. The Lord sitting back and just watching Job like, <laughs> I know he good. Right. He ain't gonna curse me. He all right. Go go ahead, prove yourself, Job. Prove it. Prove it. Prove it. That what Christ. That what the Most High do. Okay, go ahead, prove it. Right. Prove that you can make him curse me. Go ahead, prove it, Job. Prove yourself. Prove this nigga wrong, Job. <laughs> 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 the Most High like, all right, Job. Prove this nigga wrong. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing. We got to be studied to uh, to be approved of God. Hmm. We proven to God that we can be trusted with his ministry like we read. Where's that at? Where's that at? Hmm. I know that's in the word somewhere. Where's it at? Uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 4. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 4. Uh-huh. And this I say. Lest any man should beguile you with enticing. I'm sorry. First Thessalonians two and four. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I was Colossians. Oh, First Thessalonians two and four. Yep. First Thessalonians chapter two, verse four. Uh huh. But but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, we were put in trust with the gospel. The Lord entrusted us to teach His words. <laughs> he entrusted the men. And he entrusted the women also, because women got to teach the young women how to be sober, right. how to be vigilant, how to be grave, how to how to teach uh, uh, love their husbands, love right. their children. Right. God entrusted us with His words. Hmm. The only people that He trusts with His words. Right. We're the only people. We're the only people capable of breaking down the words of the living God. Read on. Even so, we speak not as pleasing men, uh -huh. but God. Which trust which try with trieth, trieth our hearts. The same thing with proveth our hearts, proveth our minds. Trieth mm. that fire, try your minds. Okay, let me see if he's gonna do it through this thing. Right. Let me put him, let me allow him to go through this. Take his job from him. Right. Take his family from him. Take that money that, that he was depending on. Take that from him. Take his car from him. Let's see how he act. Mm. Take his rank from him. Let's see how he act. Right. See what he do. God trieth our minds. Read verse 12. Verse 12, that you would walk worthy of God who hath called who you, have what? Who have called you uh -huh. unto his kingdom and glory. God called us, y'all. God called us to endure. It's just that that ye would walk worthy of God <laughs> who hath called you into his kingdom and glory. We have been called to be in the kingdom of God. That's the most that's the highest calling you can never have. Right. You called by the creator to endure. Like, remember, we wrote we read in John 15, Christ handpicked us out right. of everybody. Think about it. When you read um, oh, I gotta go off now. Give me Ezra. Let me see. I think it's second Ezra chapter nine. I always read this. A lot of people don't realize it's when you when you close the Bible mm -hmm. is when they start coming. Their trials and the trials and the proven because we a lot of people know precepts. Right. But it's when you close the Bible and you get a little trial, like the officer guy was saying, your job or a fender bender, a car, or a lost a, a lost loved one, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. that's when you're gonna see if you all these precepts you've done studied, right? Are you gonna apply you the scripture? Go. Like Bishop always say, spa. Study, pray, and apply. application yep. apply. Yep, yep. Give me 2nd Ezra 9 and um, 15. 2nd Ezra chapter 9, verse 15. Now, now just to go back, it uh, I read it, 1st Thessalonians, uh, yeah, 1st Thessalonians 2 and 12, that ye will walk worthy of God who have called you into his kingdom and glory. And we went to John 15 that says, I have, you have not chosen me, but I've chosen you. Watch this. Watch what the Lord chose us from. Read that. 2nd Ezra 9, 15. I have said before, and now do I speak, and I and will speak it also hereafter, that there be many more of them which perish than of them which shall be saved. So God says in that day it's going to be many more 
of our people that are put to death than are saved when he returns. Watch this. Like like as a wave is greater than a drop. It says like as a wave is greater than a drop. Y'all know how big a wave is. Compared to, a <laughs> Compared to a little small drop, it's like you take some some uh some eyeglass some uh eye drops, one drop compared to <laughs> compared to a tsunami wave, bro. Right. That's hundreds and hundreds of gallons of water compared to one drop that will ev uh, evaporate before it hits the ground. God says that that one drop is the people that's gonna make it. You have been called to be that drop. Right. Think about how special that is. Think about how special and, and delicate and uh, uh, chosen you are. You have been called to be the drop. You want to be the wave? That's on you. <laughs> if you want to be the, if you're going to be the wave, that's going to be on you. You can't blame the Lord because the Lord called you to be a drop. Right. <laughs> but it's up to you whether you want to be the wave. I don't know about y'all, but we want to be the drop. <laughs> we want to be the drop that make it, bro. <laughs> go back. Go back. Uh what I say? Peter or Second Thessalonians. Uh go go to uh Sirach two. Go to Sirach two one. The book of Sirach, chapter two, verse one. Mm -hmm. Um uh, six. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Now, we read this often. We read this often. And uh, a lot of times we think this is only talking about, uh, you know, our own temptations that we battle with. Yeah, it's talking about that. It's talking about your lust. Talking about your fornication. Talking about your lying, thievery. It's talking about all that stuff. But it's other forms of enduring. Could endure. Um, uh, reverse 2. Reverse 2. Verse 2. Set thy set thy heart all right and constantly endure. And constantly endure. These are the things that we must endure. All right. I I, I wrote a couple things down. Um, we must endure in our faith. I don't know. I don't know if y'all ever seen that class Bishop did the three trials of faith. Very very heavy. And that class, let me tell you something. When I first came in, that was one of the first classes I watched, and I couldn't believe it. I, I I couldn't believe just how accurate <laughs> how accurate that thing is, man. I couldn't believe it. And that really made me like, dang, these these are the gods on the earth. These are the wisest men on the planet. That's how Captain Carl told me, you know, he said that. These are the wisest men on the planet to be able to dot decipher the scriptures so well and be able to pinpoint exactly What's going to happen in sequence? You're going to have trials you're going to have trials with your wife. You're going to have trials with your congregation. You're going to have trials with your family. I mean, goodness gracious, all those things, I went through all those things. And all praise to the Mosa. The scriptures was given, the understanding, the counsel was given on how to endure in that thing. So, we're going to have to endure in our faith. We're going to have to endure in our works. That means that that same zeal you had when you came in you must die with that zeal. I'm going to say that again. The same zeal you had when you came in, you are obligated to die with that same zeal. So that means if you was coming in, putting in major work where they had to make you stop, <laughs> they had to make you, hey, bro, it's, it's snowing outside, bro. <laughs> you trying to go to camp, it's snowing. <laughs> you got to continue with that zeal, man. Continue with that zeal. But that's that enduring. You got to endure works because there's going to be times where you're not going to feel like doing it. It's going to be times where your flesh say, I'm tired. Where your flesh say, no, you know what? I I got to wake up in the morning. I got to go to work. I ain't, ain't getting no sleep. The kids, the kids on my nerves. The wife told me she want to spend time tonight. Nah, God says endure, endure, endure. So you got to endure in works. You got to endure correction. Got to constantly endure being corrected. Being corrected is something that's going to come. It's going to come. Watch this. I'm going to show you something. Uh, let me see. Get Sirach. Get Sirach. 
chapter chapter 20 Sirach chapter 20 and verse 1 uh, Sirach chapter 20 verse 1 there is a reproof that is not comely again. there's a reproof that is not comely again some man holdeth his tongue and he is wise so it says there is a reproof that is not comely that means there's going to be times where you get corrected and it's not going to be pretty it's not going to feel good it's not going to sound good it's go you're going to feel like your flesh is going to who is this nigga talking to? How I know? Because I've been through it. <laughs> but that old man in you be like, you a grown man. Who is this dude? Who, who is he talking to? I'd have been through that. But God says there's a reproof that is not comely. Watch verse 2. Verse 2. It is, it is much better to reprove. It is much better to correct. Than to be angry secretly. God says it's better to correct your brother, tell him, you know, your fault with him, than to be angry secretly. Because when you're angry secretly, now that thing festers in you, right. and it get it is it, like a canker. Like you read, what is that? Uh, Paul was writing something. It's a canker, and it, it devours your body. And next thing you know, you out of here. So, yeah, we ain't got to get it. We ain't got it. Unless you want it. Yeah. Uh, so we got to endure correction. We got to endure affliction. Affliction is going to come in this truth, y'all. It's going to come. You're going to go through things that you just feel like nobody has your back. You're going to go through things where you feel like, ain't no way God is with me right now. Ain't no way I'm in the truth right now. Look what I'm going through. You're going to feel like that. Trust me. I know. The scriptures tell you that's going to happen. We got to endure affliction. You're going to lose. You may lose your job. You may lose friends. You may lose brothers that you came in the truth with. You may lose sisters that you formed a, a, a imaginable bond with. You may lose them. You got to endure affliction. It is what it is. Endure affliction. See, that verse is heavy, um, officer, because it says reprove, then mm -hmm. be ain't than to be angry secretly. Because mm -hmm. that angry secretly going into that Matthew 18, when you to admonish, the way it yep. goes and admonish mm -hmm. your friend. Yep. You got a problem with somebody, speak to the brother first before you go talk about him or go to right. anybody else. Right, the right. The steps of Matthew 18 is clear. It says, go to your brother first, and if he will not hear you, get a witness, and then bring it to the church. You see what I'm saying? This, this angry secretly goes into you, if you don't do none of those steps, you're just mad at the brother holding a grudge that goes into love thy neighbor as thyself. Right. All these are those morals that we struggle with, these moral laws that we struggle with. Because a lot of times, the sins we go through, we can't even see them. Mm. It ain't the fringes sometimes, or it ain't the it ain't the keeping a Sabbath day. Right. Or it ain't the, not to go off the, the topic. No, 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 but go ahead, go ahead. It ain't, the, it ain't the Sabbath day or eating pork or, right. or new moons. We keep those. Those are obvious um, laws right. we keep. Mm -hmm. It's those morals, the mor that, 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 oh, morality. This, yeah, the brother looked at me wrong. Now nah, mm -hmm. I don't like how he looked at me. Mm -hmm. Oh, the sister had heels on or she thinks she all that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? These are these murmuring, these backbiters you have. And you, real, you don't realize, laws when we get to the wilderness, most high cutting off heads. Right. Off rip. <laughs> off rip. It ain't no, because you think, because we don't see them sins, the most high don't see them. That's why he tell you, that's why he gave us the scripture, Matthew 18. Mm -hmm. And that's why Sirach tell us, you got to admonish your friend. Because it may, it may mean, it may, it may not mean he didn't do it to you. Like right. the scripture say, I think it's Sirach 19. Let me see if I can find it. Yes, I, I got you. Yeah, Sirach uh, 19, 17. Or 15. Start at 15. Let's see. Uh, 14. Yep, yeah, verse 14. Yeah. Sirach, chapter 19, verse 14. Admonish thy friend. Uh -huh. It may be he have not said it. So if the friend you assume or thought did something to you, maybe he did look at you wrong. Maybe he did bump you walking down the aisle through the Sabbath day on Sabbath. Hmm. But if you never did what the scripture said, read it again. Admonish thy friend. It may be he have not said it. If you never came to him, well, you went to be, you went to another brother and talked about the brother. Right. 
You didn't go to him and ask him, bro, didn't you bump me on this? He would have He would apply what? He would have said, it made me. It would, what? What it says? And if he have, that he speak not it again. If he didn't do it, he speak not it again. Meaning if he did do it, he probably would apologize right there on the spot. Right. But if you never went to your brother, how do you expect him to even, how you, you never gave him an opportunity mm. to clean his, his wrong towards you or fix his wrong towards you. You know what I'm saying? So all these sins that we battle with, it be morality. Right. And right. sinful sometimes. Right, too. right. Hey, that's heavy. That's heavy right there. Hey, that's heavy. Verse 13 is what you want. Yeah. I'm going to read verse 13 for you. Go ahead. Admonish a friend. It may be he have not done it. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I might have bumped Officer Gad. But if Officer Gad felt some type of way about what I did, what Paul, what, what Sirach is telling us here is mm -hmm. go to Jared, go to him. Right. Ask the brother first. Don't just think in your mind or go ask another brother. Right, that brother right. Hit me like that. You, and then the brother, now you, now you, now you saw a discord now. Mm -hmm. Now you got this brother thinking about the about, about me on an evil manner right. when he yep. when you ain't even applied. Damn, maybe he didn't mean maybe that he didn't thing. mean to. Yep, yep. Maybe he didn't mean it. Yep. Read on. It says, uh, and if he have done it, and if he did do it, and if he did do it purposely, read that he do it no more. I'm gonna repent of that thing. My bad, brother. I ain't mean to do that. But if you never applied that first step, mm. instead you went to another brother or a sister. A lot of sisters fall into this category right here. <laughs> These sisters love to talk about another sister. Right. Oh, she thinks she all let her head wrap. Oh, these are these are the problems we fall we go through day in day out. But that, that's what goes back to the acronym SPA. Right. We mm -hmm. know precepts. We study. Yep. But the application behind it, when the Bible is closed, we forget about it. Right. Hey, watch this. Watch this. Just because we on that. Yeah. You, you open up a can of words right there, Jam. <laughs> Let me get uh, Sirach chapter 3 and verse 24. <laughs> Sirach <laughs> chapter 3 and verse 24. Uh-huh. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion. It says many are deceived by their own vain opinion. Watch this. This is exactly what you talk about. Read on. And an evil suspicion. Uh, this, uh, he bumped me because he don't like me. Has overthrown their judgment. So now hey. let me go tell this brother. Hey, watch out for this brother right here. This brother will bump you. Won't even say nothing to you. Right. Watch out for that sister. That that, that sister won't even. That, that sister right there, she thinks she make a living bread better than me, but she really don't. Right. That's that evil suspicion. <laughs> and now it's overthrowing your judgment. Now, now it's got you breaking the laws of God. Uh -huh. Damn. <laughs> Scriptures say, be ye angry, but, but sin, sin not. not. Right. <laughs> Lest the sun go down upon your wrath, meaning that wisdom. Now you lose the, mm -hmm. the, the understanding of how you're supposed to apply the admonish yep. or yep. the Matthew 18. Mm -hmm. You lose that because you're so... Got that That's canker, that like evil. Officer Gas yep. said, that evil in you mm -hmm. that you never even allowed the 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 wisdom the most I could bestowed upon you to go like the scriptures and go admonish the brother yep. or sister. Yep, yep. That's that. That's that judgment. Now your judgment is swayed. Right. Not not like uh, uh what's that? Michael was says about the wisdom. Now your wisdom is gone. Now yeah. your wisdom's gone. Now your judgment is your judgment is off. Now you're doing things that everybody's like, whoa. Dang. What's wrong with that sister? What's wrong with that brother? Right. And in your mind, you think you're doing something good, yes. but you actually evil as hell. You're doing some evil stuff. Judgment overthrown. Your judgment has been overthrown by your wicked, wicked suspicion, right. by not applying the scriptures. And that's heavy that you brought that out. Yeah. Uh, enduring uh, enduring correction, that's, from what I've seen, that's like the number one reason people fall out. That's like the number one reason why brothers and brothers beef with each other, sisters, and you mainly see it with the sisters, sisters beef with each other, right. that's because they don't think that one, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come a time where I'm going to have to correct this sister. Right. The thing is, we, you know, and, and as people in the world, like I was telling the brother the other day, when you first come in, everything's so happy and jolly right. and Everybody loves me. Shalom, most high Christ bless. Oh, I love you, sis. Oh, you're so good. You, oh, oh, you, you know what I'm saying? You make the best of living bread. I love you. Thank you for giving me those scriptures the other day. Thank you. Brother, shalom, most high Christ bless. You need anything, call me, da 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 da, da. When we first come in, everything is so jolly and, and happy-go-lucky that we don't understand that it's going to come a time 
where you're going to have to correct that brother. Right. You're going to have to correct that sister. And as P- and as uh, uh, Israelites, right. we don't want confrontation with the people we love, hmm. with the people that we like. We don't want confrontation, so we'll shed you know, we'll we'll turn a blind eye right. to some evil stuff because you don't want to fall out with this sister because you like her right. or you like him. Nah, God says you tell that brother, you tell that sister, hey, you was wrong for this. Right. Da 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 da. Work it out and move on. That goes into what you brought up <laughs> earlier. Hate, hate thy brethren, hate thy sister, right. hate thy mother. You don't hate them more than Christ. Christ I mean, hate meaning you you put them above the word now. Mm-hmm. Because now you allow your personal friendship with this person right. above the laws of God. And and what's going to happen is now both of y'all are going to go through problems now. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Watch this. Get Proverbs 8.13. Get Proverbs 8.13. Uh, the book of Proverbs, yep. chapter 8, verse 13. Mm-hmm. The fear of the Lord... Is to hate evil. God says, in order to fear him, you must hate evil. So that means if I hate evil, that means I hate the evil in you. Hmm. I hate the evil in me. I hate, that's why we go on the screen and teach, because we hate the evil in our people. We don't hate our people, but we hate the evil that's in them. That's why we give them the word, cut them up, build them up. That's, that, that's our job. You know, pride. And arrogancy, uh-huh. and the and the evil way, and the forward mouth, do I hate? God says, if you want to fear me, learn to hate evil. Hmm. All right. So give me James one and two. We almost done. What time it is? We got time. Yeah, we got time. So do, those are. The, I mean, it's it's a lot more things that you know we can all. I mean, it gets twenty thousand things we got to endure. But I just chopped it up as enduring faith, enduring your works. Endure when you get corrected. Endure when you're going through affliction. And endure, oh, that's why I didn't touch. Endure temptation. Hmm. That endure temptation is enduring what your lust, what your flesh lusts after. Whether it be big booty women, hmm. whether it be muscle-bound men, hell, whether it be same sex, whether it be animals, well, whatever, smoking, selling dope, whatever, money. God says you got to endure that thing, endure your temptation. Because you are being called for a purpose. Right. And you are built to endure. It's in your DNA to endure sin. It's there. Get James 1 and 2. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 2. Uh-huh. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Come on. Knowing this. That the trying of your faith. The working. trying of your faith, meaning the things you got to go through, the things that you're going to go through is trying your faith. Come on. Work it patience. Is, is, is working patience in you because now you're learning to be patient like we read in uh, Sirach chapter 2. Right. What says, uh, uh, I read it, I read it. Sirach chapter 2 and verse 4. Uh, four. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully right. and, be, and be patient. Mm-hmm. When thou art changed to a low estate. So we got to be patient when we're going through these trials, when we're going through these situations. All right? Read it again. Ver- um, James chapter 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Come on. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. The trying of your faith worketh patience. Read on. But let patience have her perfect work uh-huh. that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. So God says in order to be perfect when Christ comes back, we must go through these trials. We must deal with these situations. We must endure temptation, endure in the trial of our faith, because at the end, that is what's going to make us perfect. Right. First Corinthians 10, 13. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation... Take it you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. So whatever I'm going through, Jerham's going to go through. Right. Whatever the business I went through, we you know we all going to go through the same thing. We all going to be tempted with the same devices. We all going to be tempted on different levels, but, but ultimately it's going to be the same temptation. Right. So that means that nobody is going to, is going to get to that day 
and say, nobody never been through what I went through. Right. You ain't going to be able to tell the Lord the reason why I've, I succumbed to temptation is because my temptation was stronger than anybody else's. <laughs> You ain't going to be able to say that. <laughs> God says, hey, I tempted all of y'all the same. So, I mean, you got to endure this thing. It's, it's, it's just like when you try out for a police, uh, you know, the Army, the Navy, the military. They always put you through an academy. They always put you through a test of your strength, a test of your will to see if you got what it takes to be a police officer. To see if you got what it takes to be a firefighter. See if you got what it takes to to uh uh to be in the military, the Marines. Only a only the chosen will make it. Right. Only the strong will survive in this truth, y'all. Only the strong will survive. Give me uh James 511. It says for gold is tried in a fight. Right. Even gold gotta go through it. Yep. And God compares to gold. James 5 and 11. 11. Behold. We count them happy which endure. It says we count them happy which endure. Watch this. Come on. Ye, yea, ha, yea, have heard of, ye have heard the patience of Job. It says ye have heard the patience of Job. Mm. Watch this. And have seen the end of the Lord. It says, and you have seen the end of the Lord. Job got to a point where he couldn't even move. Hmm. Imagine that. Boils so, so doggone uh, hurt and painful. You can't even move. Job, wife turned on him he lost everything lost his kids lost his fortune everything but he was patient and it says and uh you have heard of the go. patience of job uh -huh. and have seen the end of the lord I have seen the end of the lord gave him double of everything watch this that the lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy it says the lord is very pitiful and of tender mercies that means all we got to do is do our job we do our job as 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 uh, servants of the Lord right. and endure to the end, not not make it a burden to keep God's commandments, and the Lord going to show us pitiful and tender mercies. Get Sirach. Oh no, we just read that. We do. Yeah, we ain't gonna read that no more. Get First Peter two nineteen. First Peter two nineteen. The book of First Peter chapter two, verse nineteen. Mm -hmm. For this, for this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God Come on. endureth grief, uh -huh. suffering, suffering wrongfully. Suffereth wrongfully. Now, as blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, the last thing we want is somebody lying on us. Mm. <laughs> that right there can get you killed. Yeah. Oh, you lying on me? Oh, hell no. Nah. Now you out the spirit now. Nah. Now you just like the hell with this, I'm out. <laughs> God says, um, this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God, you got a mind towards God, mm -hmm. endure grief, suffering wrongfully. God says, I, I like it when, when you suffer wrongfully for my sake. Right. I like that thing. Why? Because Christ suffered wrongfully for the nation of Israel. He was a man without sin, but yet he died a painful death. He died a horrible way, but he was a man without sin. He suffered wrongfully. So who are you to think, yo, you suffer wrongfully is, is more important than what Christ went through? God says that's thankworthy because in this truth, in this walk, we're going to suffer wrongfully, y'all. We're going to be in situations where we are right and we're deemed as wrong. We just got to suck it up and take the punches. Why? Because we got to be patient. We got to be patient. We got to have faith in the Lord that, that the Lord going to handle all things. But when you try to do things on your own, it never works out. Never works out. Give me 1 Peter 1 and 7. 1 Peter 1, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Unto you, therefore, which uh, believe. 1 uh, Peter 1 and 7. Oh, that's 2 and 7, sorry. First Peter one seven, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold what? that perishes, uh huh, though it be tried with fire. What it says? What though it be tried with fire? God says your faith gonna be tried with fire. Mm. That fire is your tribulations, is what you gotta endure, what you are gonna be tempted with. Your faith, your works, your correction, your affliction. God says 
uh, the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perished, though it be tried with fire. Read on. Might be found unto unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus it Christ. It says might be found unto praise and honor and glory. In that day when you endure, that's how the Lord is going to look at your faith. It was tried with fire, and now it's me. It says, "Found unto praise and honor and glory." We're gonna honor you because of your faith. You're gonna be glorified because of your faith. Get uh, First Corinthians three thirteen. First Corinthians three thirteen. First Corinthians chapter three, verse thirteen. Mm -hmm. Every man's work. Shall be made manifest. Says, Every man's work will be made manifest. Watch this. For the day shall declare it. Uh huh. Because it shall be revealed by fire. It shall be revealed by fire. Hmm. That fire is talking about uh uh your trials, and it's also talking about the nuclear bombs. When the right. nukes hit, that fire. Read on. And the fire shall try every man's work. Of what sort it is. Because now it, it says the fire going to try every man's works and what sort it is. Because a lot of people, um, they, they're they not sincere in this thing. And you can tell the ones that are not sincere, the ones that don't actually uh, want to endure to the end. Because they will go through something and they'll give up on God. Mm. They'll give up on the scriptures. I, 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 done, heard, I done heard things in this truth like... Um, the the Bible ain't working for me no more. Mm -hmm. I'd have heard things like, uh, you know, he offend me by living. Like, whoa. Mm -hmm. Brother, the brother can offend you by living? Damn. That means the only way you're gonna be satisfied <laughs> is in putting him to death. Damn. I done heard these things, man. People that come in and they they so zealous. Most of Christ bless Shalom. I love y'all all. This is my family. Mm -hmm. Then they go through something, they go through a tribulation. Close that Bible. It can't do nothing for me no more. Tell the things. Um, that's why the Lord tells you tells us to uh prepare our soul for temptation. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Read on. Verse fourteen. If any man's work abide which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. It says now after the fire, if any man's work is still here, mm. which he has built thereupon, he shall receive. In a war. Watch this. Read on. If any man's work shall be burnt, he shall suffer loss. It says, if any man's work shall be burnt, he shall suffer loss. Read on. But he himself shall be saved, uh -huh. yet so as by fire. Yet so as by fire. You're going to be tried. You're going to go through some things, and then you're going to want to give up. You're going to want to give up. It's, it's times where I'd be like, man, am I in the truth? My thoughts be so weak, I be like, dang, Lord, am I going to make it? But we got to continue to fight, continue to be steadfast in the word, steadfast in the truth, uh, 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 ask for counsel, right. praying fast, should be fasting uh, often, praying often, studying often, um, uh, anoint thyself with oil. Right. Do do what the scriptures, the manuscripts, the um, blueprint. God. The yeah. guidelines, thank you, the guidelines to safety, because this is your safety net. This Bible is your safety net. And when we take hold on it and use it, we'll never die. Mm. We'll, we'll, we'll never lose. We're going to always make it. Get Wisdom of Solomon 3 or 5. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 5. Come on. And having been a little chastened. And God, God says we was a little chastised. I mean, what we went through in the eyes of the Lord wasn't even a lot. The slavery, the captivity after captivity after captivity, the names changed multiple times, us beaten, thrown over the ships by the millions. God says that was only a little chastised. He was only chastised a little bit. Read on. They shall be greatly rewarded. It said we shall be greatly rewarded. This is why I read. For God proveth them uh -huh. and found them worthy for himself. It says God proveth you and found him worthy for himself. What you got to understand is we have been called to endure. And we have been called to endure so that God can find us worthy for himself. Worthy to be called the sons of God. Worthy to be called the daughters of, uh, of God, the princesses of God. 
You got you to gotta endure to the end to prove yourself to the Lord that you are worthy to get the kingdom. You are worthy of immortality. You are worthy of being over cities. You are worthy to having servants and handmaids at your beck and call. Are you worthy for that? Get Second Peter's one and uh, four. Second Peter's chapter one, verse four. Whereby are whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. So it says we was given great promises. Come on. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. God called us when Christ handpicked us himself and vouched with us to the Father. Lord, don't worry. He's going to come and go serve you. He's going to do great things in your name. I, I know right now, uh, you know, he's he's in prison. I, I know right now, you know, he, he he's, you know, an adulterer, fornicator. I know right now she's a, a harlot, whatever. God says that we what? We was what? We... Having escaped the corruption. We escaped the corruption through Christ calling us out of the world. Mm. We escaped that thing. You know what it means to escape? That means that you was on the verge of death. You was on the verge of being caught. Mm. <laughs> Somebody was chasing you and you escaped them. God says we have escaped them. Read on. Escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. Through lust. Come on, and watch this. And beside this. Given all diligent, add to your faith virtue. Add to your faith virtue. And to virtue, knowledge. Knowledge with the word the, the, the word of God. Come on. And to knowledge, tem temperance. To knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, patience. Patience. Watch this. And to patience, godliness. Uh-huh. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. Brother, you see all these things? All these things is the guidelines to verse 10. All these things we're going to read on. It's the guidelines. Read on. And to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall ne neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. It say he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see far off and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. You forgot that the Lord chose you out of the wickedness you were in. You forgot. You just thought it was your own doing. No, it's not your doing. The Lord done it. The Lord did it. Read on. Wherefore the rather, brethren, Give diligence to make your calling. To make your what? To make your calling. Like, like the class that we are called to endure. To make your calling. An election sure. Do you know what it means to elect something? We know the Israelites are God's elect. But you know what it means to elect? They elect presidents. They elect mayors. Well, people vote for the best person to lead them. Right. God says we are his elect. He chose us because in his eyes, we are the best people to have. In his eyes, we are the top notch. It says, give diligence to make your calling an election. Sure, read. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. If we do these things, we shall never fall. If we have knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, brotherly love, charity, God says we will never be unfruitful, and we will never fail. We'll never fail. So, Israel, the call to endure is real, y'all. The call to endure, like it says, make your calling and election sure. We have all been called to endure. We have all been called to be the elect. We have all been called to go through things, but always come out at the end better. Two, one more thing I want to hit on. Give me Matthew 15 and 3. 